Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Hey folks, Tom Vassell here. Z Garcia, hello. Hi, I'm Sam Healy. Today we're talking about Expedition Endurance for Time Stories and... We've already done a review. You can watch a review with no spoilers. This one is going to be spoilery filled. Spoilers. 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 Turn, Turn off. Spoilers. Turn off your video if you don't want to see spoilers. Here we go. Spoilers. You ready? Spoilers. Have you gone away yet? Have you gone away? Are you sure spoilers? you want to continue? Because we've got spoilers. Say it. Cthulhu. <laughs> That's what I was going to do. <laughs> which technically, and this is also, if you paid close attention, which I only noticed after... Right there on the cover of the box is a Cthulhu symbol. I think that's like the yellow sign or whatever from... Is he like in the Cthulhu cult? Yeah. I'm just saying, anybody who actually knows what Cthulhu be. has played any of those other games and takes a look close enough, they'll be like, that's, that sh- symbol will show up in Elder's Horror, Elder Sign, I mean, all those games. So I've, you would know. I've played all those games. And I didn't notice it until you pointed it out. I didn't notice it either until after we were done playing, right. actually. It was after his worship group. And I know, right? Yeah, they were like, <laughs> like okay, oh, we just talked about that last time. Mean, <laughs> today's talk is going to be about Expedition Endurance. <laughs> At what point in the game did you realize it was Cthulhu? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I suspected it because there was, at one point, it mentioned something about octopus things or whatever and I was like well wait I, I knew when you said Dagon or something like that right. I think you said that and I was like well okay that's sold well I got a madness card that said I was hearing the call of the great old one and I was oh, like boom. oh yeah, well that's it. Okay. cause well, I went into this expecting it to be like the thing yeah okay. that's what I thought it was gonna be too that's pass a virus around kind of stuff that's what I was hoping it would be right cause I'm not usually on board for the whole Cthulhu thing <laughs> it's it's and the reason this kind of gets a pass for me with this whole Cthulhu not liking Cthulhu thing is that at the end, Cthulhu is definitely the bad dude. Right. There's no gray area there. Oh, you thought because Cthulhu sometimes is like the good guy? Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, come on. They're not, not the good guy, but people are like, you know, you're you're a cultist or you're uh, a follower oh, of Cthulhu oh, okay. and, or you are trying to help Cthulhu enter this world. No, 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 no. You're definitely trying to kick that dude's butt and stop him from entering this world. <laughs> okay. And that's why I think this, you know, I, I'll give this a pass with it being Cthulhu because it is he is definitely the bad dude here. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, but I was hoping that it was going to be something like, you know, uh, The Thing or... Well, The Thing uh, was in there a little bit. That thing I had, like, growing inside me. Right. That, and that green ooze that, you know... Yeah, gets, yeah, 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 yeah. And all the animals were kind of... Uh, they didn't like the humans. Right. And I, I, I really... They were... I think it may have... It seems like it was, like, deliberate. We're going to make people think it's this. I think they just went for, like, combining interesting genres that go well together, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of interesting choices, what do you guys think of that first, like, you show up? But first of all, the setup is this whole, like, something's gone wrong. Yeah. Budget, like, our budget ran out. Yeah. We got to shop, you know, shoot you back into the past. And at some point Bob, during that first thing, he was like, something bad already happened. What are we here to fix? I know. I, what <laughs> you did you were think of that? that? Like, when we jumped back, they yeah. missed where they're supposed to plug us in by a few days. Right. I thought that was a great twist. Yeah, that's cool. That was fantastic. Well, Very it was, cool. and we were wandering around, and I was like, "Just <clears throat> everything went wrong There's already. No, There's no one dead. here. This is not that exciting. And then it's like, you're going to die in five turns. And then they're like, oh, here's the right place. And I was like, my mind blew. We're going to the same locations again. Yeah. You got to see it frame. like three days before. Right. So you're like, I found things three days from now that I have to go check if they're still if they're there already right it's like a mind trip but it was fantastic yeah. that's a they gimmick but it's a good one. job with yeah. that yeah that was, that was a way cool thing to do though because they brought in that whole time traveling because up until now yeah you're traveling in time but it has it's kind of been in the back burner Right. And here they kind of... Well, you jump in one time it's right. like it doesn't technically matter that you're time traveling exactly but now they're like Boom, here's what is going to happen in three days if you guys screw up. That's great, man. <laughs> yeah. It makes me think in the future. Could you imagine if they allowed you to 
time jump within the story, like right. one day back, one day forward, two days back. Yeah. That'd be insanely cool. Yeah, and this one gives you a glimpse of that. Yeah. I wouldn't mind if they had like a five pack card thing. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a fantastic. Big adventure, right? The other thing I really liked about this one was the madness cards. Yes. That was a really cool thing. At first you're like, okay, we can't go mad, we can't go mad. You go mad. And when you go mad, suddenly you have like another agenda, but you're not try you're not like a traitor. Right. It's just that you have this paranoia or whatever it you're is. You're forced to act differently. And you're forced to act a way, and everyone else is like looking at you, wondering why you're acting a specific way. Yeah, yeah. And that's like a natural paranoia that creeps into the game. Right. It's not, I mean, I guess you could, from one aspect, say that it's forced, but it isn't because you're told by a card that you have to act a certain way whenever something happens. Mm -hmm. And usually it's pretty specific, right? So you're kind of just waiting for people to do whatever it is that you're supposed to be watching for. And when you do, you act differently than you normally would. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, it puts you on edge, like you said. It makes you worry that, okay, well, we're going to go toe-to-toe with this thing. Is is he going to turn and run? Right. It makes you worry about your team's integrity, right? Yes. And that's and a it's, great way to tackle that concept of feels, people going it mad. It feels natural. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to argue and say that I think it does a better job than Dead of Winter does with the same exact thing. Yeah. Dead of Winter gives you that thing. You're hoarding food because you're a hoarder and you're hoarding food, right? And you look like a traitor. And I, I like that aspect. Yeah. But I thought this game did a better job of it. Right. It's doing it the same too. thing. And it's like, Z would be like, go over here. And my thing is like, okay, well, I got it. No, I'm going over here. And you're like, what's wrong with you, you idiot? <laughs> right. <laughs> because I don't trust you, but... No, it- I mean, the one the one thing that, that uh, I thought was cool was with the one that you got was that if both of us told you to do something, you would, like, go postal. But since only that didn't one happen. of us told you I to know, do it, great. you were like... Okay, I'll go do that. No, I, I would do. It. I wouldn't do it if you oh. suggested something. I wasn't doing it. Yeah. So I was like, please okay. don't suggest I do it. Let me just do it. <laughs> but they'd be like, you should go here. Well, I'm not. I'm staying over here now. Just that's interesting. You gotta. I mean, it puts you. You have to really pay attention and listen to what's going on. But you know, and especially works well if it's something that does not need to be replayable. Also, right? Because if you play this five times, I can learn the things. Right? You know. You know. Yeah. So, I don't know if the Dead of Winter comparison is necessarily apt, but it works really it well. It just reminded me of that this. same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Now, if you don't like in these games where you have to go back and go to different spots over and over again, that is in this one, right? If we had failed on our third run-through, we would have to go back in a very specific order and yes. do everything. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you were trying to find the optimal way. And that's the way it is in a lot of the, the yeah. games. If you don't like that, you don't like time stories. Right. That's what I was just I mean, just there's thinking. no like, need to ha- you, harp on that point. I mean, that's because... like every single episode that's come out from this thing. They all make you do that. Yeah. And this one had the first time where you could be a bad guy. Now, that didn't happen to us. Remember the 666 that yeah. location is up? And what do you think about that whole metagame thing if you look at the deck outside? I don't like, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I thought that was that's, hilarious. That's kind of goofy. I if don't you, like that kind of stuff. If you look at that 666 deck, you have to take away one of your previous trophies or something yeah, I like don't that. Know. I, I don't like that kind of stuff because I find it to be very, like, it makes me think of Quelf, actually. The, the really stupid party game, Quelf. Yeah, I thought it was great. Which did that thing. You do a car, you draw a car, do something stupid, like put a, you know, a vase on your head and dance. Yeah, but that's not what this was. And then you put the card down. If anybody else was like, what are you doing? They grabbed that card. It said, and if you're someone else and looked at this card, now you got to stand on a foot or something. I don't like that. Yeah, but this is more like, before we go, guys, let me look into the jaws of madness. That's what I I feel. I get what they're replicating. I don't know if mechanically it's the best way to implement it, but it's not a big deal. It was such a minor part of it. Okay. Well, either way, overall, I enjoyed this. Oh, yeah. We never actually played as the dog, and I do wish that the FAQ, if there had been something in there that said, okay, the dog can't read. This is what that means. Because that really, I mean, if you're going to say, cannot read, then you need to clarify to us. Can you not look at cards then? Right. I mean, can I look at the painting? Can I communicate with the other players? Am I supposed to like cover the bottom and just look at the drawing? Yeah, right. (laughs) Yeah, but see, what good does that do, though? Because, I I mean, I'm going to come up to you and... 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, it doesn't oh, say you can What is that last scene? What did Well, the thing about it is, it does not say at any point you cannot talk. It says I you can't know. read. I know, but... So can the dog talk but not read? Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm I just mean, saying, if, if you put that in the game, you definitely this. need to clarify that. Yeah. It, it needed to be... Yeah, I, I honestly didn't take it out of fear I was going to mess up whatever their intent was. Yeah. Whatever they meant for it to be. Right. Yeah, that's an FAQ thing. I really did like the theme, though. Not the biggest Cthulhu fan in the world, but if I was... Well, I am making a top ten list of Cthulhu games. I can't even put this one on it because that spoils it. Right. Just like I couldn't... Well, anyway. <laughs> I couldn't... I'm just trying to no, for a different, different scenario. But again, I like this one a lot. I think this is a great way... I wouldn't... I think if I met somebody, I would say, okay, what kind of person is that person? Do they like puzzles? Great, I'll use Asylum. Do they like fighting? I'll use Marcy. Yeah. Do they like the story, time story think, the story? Right? Then this is the one I'm using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they like story, this is... Still not kid-friendly... This is not kid friendly at all. Okay, there's some pretty gruesome things that happen in here. Yeah. Um, but man, I really enjoyed this one. I'm I'm back on the time stories train. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, back on I'm the excited time to see what's jukes. next. Alrighty. Well, hey, when you're talking about things in the comments, try not to spoil stuff too much. Although yeah. people should not be reading these comments if they don't want to be spoiled. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassal. Z Garcia. Thanks everybody. Sam Healy. Adios, y'all. Kachulu. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. <laughs>